Creative editing is a complicated skill to master. For example, do you know the five primary ways you can begin a cut, depending on what type of scene it is? Were you aware that you need to organize the footage in your project very differently when cutting a trailer or a promo versus cutting a feature? What do you do when you've got more footage than you know what to do with? Or not enough? How about when your music doesn't fit and you've got no budget for a composer? Or what if the cut just doesn't feel big enough, scary enough, funny enough, sad enough, or cool enough? Hello and welcome. My name is Chris and I'm the lead trainer here at Film Editing Pro. I'm going to be your guide throughout the next few videos. Editing challenges like the ones I just described are exactly the kind of hands-on, useful topics we're going to cover in this three-part training series. Our focus here is specifically on creative editing, the fundamental craft of telling a story and creating emotion using picture and sound. It doesn't matter what software package you use or what plugins you have. These techniques and concepts can be applied to any editing program out there. Now, if you're watching this, you probably fall into one of four categories. You might be a full or part-time editor, a student, an independent filmmaker, or maybe an online content creator. Whatever your situation might be, we've got some really exciting stuff to share with you. So let me tell you a little bit about your instructors here at Film Editing Pro. Our editors work with major studios and networks like NBC, FX, Fox, Warner Brothers, Paramount, Disney, Sony, Universal Pictures, and many others. These are professional editors working in the film industry today. We're very excited to give you this unique opportunity to learn directly from their combined editing experience. You're about to discover industry secrets and a level of training that you just don't get in school. Our goal is to drastically reduce the amount of time it takes for you to gain a high level of mastery over editing. That means taking your skills from the beginner, intermediate, or even advanced levels and elevating them to a professional status. The ability to edit with a truly professional polish can mean the difference between getting a job working on a low-budget amateur project versus a chance to edit the next Hollywood blockbuster or hit television series. Or it can mean the difference between editing a short film that fails to get any attention and festival love versus one that gets noticed and kickstarts your career. There's a great quote from renowned film editor Walter Murch, and it goes like this. Film editing is now something almost everyone can do at a simple level and enjoy it. But to take it to a higher level requires the same dedication and persistence that any art form does. All right, so in this first video, we're gonna start by talking about some of the core skills and attributes you'll need as an editor. Then we're gonna look at a variety of very specific techniques that you can start using right away to improve your own editing. Let's begin with the core skills. First, you'll need to have some software knowledge. This is pretty obvious, but I still thought I should mention it. Before you can start editing creatively, you need to be comfortable enough with your software so that it isn't a distraction to the creative process. Whether it's Avid, Final Cut, Premiere, or any other program, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that you know it well enough to move around the software with confidence. Like I said earlier, software skills aren't really something that we teach here. There's plenty of other resources out there to help you with that. We'll be spending our lesson time 100% on creative techniques. All right, enough about that, moving on. So next, I strongly, strongly recommend that you start using your keyboard shortcuts or hotkeys if you aren't already. A faster editor is usually a better editor. Clicking around the interface too much really slows you down. With the keyboard, you can try things more quickly and explore new ideas. Here's an example of a few edits performed only using a mouse. And now, here's an example of the same edits performed using primarily hotkeys. Using the keyboard is about 10 seconds faster. You'll work faster with a director or a producer in the room, and the process of editing will seem a lot easier and more fluid. Now, there's actually a very specific way to set up your keyboard shortcuts. I rarely use the default hotkeys that come with the program. 
Usually, they require moving your hand around the keyboard too much and actually having to look down to see what you're pressing. Instead, take a tip from professional gamers. If you want to be quick on the keyboard, set up your hotkeys so that you never have to move your hand to reach everything that you need. For me, I like to assign all my keyboard shortcuts to the left side of the keyboard. This is how far my fingers, which are pretty small, can comfortably reach without having to lift my hand. Now, not only will this make you really fast, it will allow you to keep your hand in a stationary, comfortable position and avoid overuse injuries, like carpal tunnel syndrome. By assigning shift, control, and option modifiers to the different letters and numbers, you'll have more than enough available keys to map just about any functions that you use on a regular basis. The last thing I want to mention is actually an important attribute that every editor needs to have. To be a great editor, you need to have a strong desire for perfection and the willpower to stick to it. It's dangerously easy to cut something together, polish it a little bit, and then say, I might be able to make that a little bit better if I spent some more time on it, but honestly, it's good enough. Well, let me tell you from experience, it's never good enough. The best editors learn to trust their gut if something in a cut feels a tiny bit off, or maybe it comes across as uninspired, boring, or strange, they keep working on it until it's perfect. Trust me, people will notice the smallest problems in a cut. Always fix them. It'll separate you from 95% of the other editors out there. All right, so now that we've covered some important fundamentals, let's look at some techniques that are a little bit more specific and hands-on. The team at Film Editing Pro sat down together and we came up with a list of all the different types of editing challenges you might run into. These are the types of editing skills you usually have to learn through trial and error, and as a result, they usually take a long time to figure out. The list that we came up with had literally hundreds of topics on it. Since we don't want this video to drag on forever, we just chose a handful of them to include for now. Now I am going to cover a lot of information very quickly here. So don't worry if you feel a little bit overwhelmed. We'll be coming back to all of it in a lot more detail in future videos. So first, let's start with an audio tip. When you're working with sound design in let's say an action scene, make an effort to layer a variety of high, medium, and low end sounds to create a fuller mix, like this hit, which is actually three hits, a bassy sub hit, a mid-range drum, and a high-end accent. You don't need to do this every time, but when you can, you'll find that it makes a big difference in the richness and the feeling of immersion in your scene. Plus, you'll be sure that your scene audio is fully audible to your viewers, whether they're watching your video on a pair of high-end studio monitors or on a crappy iPhone speaker with very little bass output. So this next tip we mentioned a bit earlier in the video. Did you know that there's a difference in how you should organize your footage when cutting a feature versus cutting a trailer or a promo? Well, there actually is, and it's a big difference. Most people know how to organize footage for a scene-based cut, like a feature or a TV show. Just arrange your footage in bins and folders, organized either by scene, camera roll, or shoot date. Then, within those containers, you'll typically have all your takes separated out, and possibly even labeled with some sort of shot description, or any thoughts that you might have. Cutting a trailer or a promo based on a TV show or a feature is very different. The material is presented in a non-linear fashion, pieced together in the most interesting way to give a summary of what the full piece is about. Now, because of this, you need a different level of access to your source materials. First, Dialogue should be broken down in a bin or a folder all by itself. Typically, you'll want to type the character's name followed by the line that they deliver. You'll do this for every single line in the movie. Keep in mind, at this point, you'll probably already have at least a rough cut of the feature, so you'll be breaking down your dialogue lines and your visuals based on the feature, not based on all of the dailies, so it's not quite as tedious as it sounds. So, speaking of the visuals, you'll want to arrange them by category. I like to use sequences, so in this example, you can see that I've separated out all my favorite shots in each of the following categories. Love and beauty, dark and sad, accents, and scope and inserts. Now you have access to all the shots and all the lines from anywhere in the movie based on the relevant content you need to create your trailer or promo. 
This makes it a lot easier to find new and interesting juxtapositions of moments, lines, and shots from your film that aren't necessarily in the order where they occur. And that's what promo editing is all about. Now, here's something I see a lot of editors struggle with. Tip three is about advanced music editing, specifically custom editing on music cue. So say you've got a scene and you're using a piece of library music to score it, but the cue isn't long enough, or maybe you just wanna change the way it flows a bit. Well, there's a lot of things we could discuss here about this topic, but I'll just show you one simple and powerful technique. How to stop and start your music exactly where you want it to and make the changes seem like they're part of the original song. So, take this cue for example. It sounds like this. So let's say we want to stop it and then start it back up. Cut your music off after a main downbeat. Add a little dissolve to prevent popping and create a small piece of media that you can then apply a reverb to. Now you have the music stopping and the last note ringing out. To start it back up again, you can basically just do the opposite. Take your reverbed beat, reverse it, and then use it as a lead in back into the music and you're off and running. Simple and versatile. I use it all the time. All right, so tip number four, here's a fun one. How to change the audio quality as a character goes from outside to inside, gets in a car, or closes a door to a room full of loud background noise. The goal is to affect the audio to make it muffled and distant sounding, which is what we're gonna do without even touching the volume levels. So let's try an example of someone getting into a car. Here's what we have so far. So when the door closes, we need to make it sound like the character is now in the car. Start by adjusting the EQ to remove the high-end crispness. We're going to really decrease the high-end sounds and mid-tones, pretty much anything above 11 kHz in this case. A car has a lot of soundproofing, so we'll be pretty aggressive. Now add a bit of deverb or echo to the background noise, only a tiny bit, to give it a distant quality. Be careful not to get too heavy-handed on this part, it should be very subtle. Alright, let's take a listen. Nice, there it is. So you can probably already tell, the techniques we're teaching go into a lot more detail than you're used to seeing in other training. That's because we wanna give you information that you can actually put to use. And there's no reason to spend time figuring these things out on your own. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. Other people have already figured this stuff out. You can think about a lot of the things that we teach like recipes. For example, there's no need to figure out how to make an apple pie on your own through trial and error. Other people have already spent the time trying all the stuff that didn't work, and they came up with a good recipe that does. Now, sure, you can tweak the recipe a bit on your own if you want. Maybe add a little bit more sugar, a bit more cinnamon, and maybe you'll improve it. But there's definitely no reason to start from scratch. That's a big, frustrating, time-consuming mistake that way too many editors make. The techniques we talked about in this video are just the tip of the iceberg. We have lots of free training available on our website, including three editing mini courses that cover everything from how to edit trailers and promos, to cutting action, shaping dramatic moments, working with dialogue, and editing music to fit your cut perfectly. Our main goal is to help you learn quickly, follow your passion, and be inspired to create amazing things. Hop into any of our free online courses and we'll send your first lesson today. Hope to see you inside.